relaxing. And drawing up. Slide the hands down to frame the knees. Roll onto the top of the head. And then draw up the way we did in that child's pose core work. Draw it in. Walk the feet in a little bit closer, straighten the legs. If this is a first time for you in tripod, bring the right knee to the right tricep. And then once again, draw it in, draw it up. Maybe the other knee comes. Nice job, that's my gosh, so strong. Bring it back down, nice and slow. Sink the hips back, come up to a comfortable seat. How did that feel? Wicked. Oh, wicked, I love it. <laughs> it's so much easier with wide-legged straddle. It's, it's so safe, much easier with that. That's it's definitely a way to do better. Why would it be easier to straddle up? Can anybody guess? Yeah, yeah. It's, 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 it's a counter balance is the idea. Why is it easier to have a banana backed inversion? Does anybody not know what banana back means? So a banana back, let's see if I can get upside down. A banana back usually looks something like Yeah, yeah. yeah. like a banana. Yeah. That's a banana back. That's how your feet, your head around. Yeah, because it's a counterbalance. Why is it harder to do this? Perfect norm. <laughs> exactly, because you're perfect norm. Yeah. So it requires more strength, more of the wrapping in. Who here has never gone up in the tripod headstand? Alright, awesome. Alright, we're gonna partner up again. Gary, you're my partner. Once again, well, so alternate. One person's gonna come into child's pose first. And Gary, let me have you come into your child's pose. And just like we did before, hands slide down towards the knees. I want you to pull that navel up and away. And then the elbows squeeze in. And then all those points, just like you did with me, is trying to press the floor away, okay? And as you walk the feet in, all I'm gonna do is lift his ankles. That's all I'm gonna do. And I'm like, all right, Gary's got this, all right? So I'm gonna leave him alone. <laughs> and he's already there. All I'm gonna do is show him where his hips are in relation to his head. Because as soon as he knows where those are, he goes up, okay? And then I'm like, all right, he's here. Gary, squeeze my leg, squeeze my hand. Oops, it's okay. Oh. Squeeze my hand. <laughs> there we go. All right. Feel free to bring your feet up a little bit higher. Knees in, knees in.
to our seat. Do you think it's a personal preference, toes planted, or heels pressed? I absolutely do think it's a personal preference. Um, I've done it both ways. Sometimes I'm on a phase where I'm like, Dorsey flex the feet every time. And it works great for me. Sometimes I'm like, point the toes, send the energy all the way up. And that works for me great too, so it's going to be personal preference. When you go upside down, you're going to find the way that helps you. When we dorsiflex the foot, we tend to engage more of the anterior plane, so the front body. If that's where you're weak, guess what? You're going to have 
active, dorsiflex the foot. But if you're already strong through the anterior plane and you need to engage through the back, a pointed toe is going to help engage the calf, right? So it's going to be unique for all of us. It really depends on where you're working. Like I said, inversions are the roadmap to our practice. As we begin to let them unfold, we learn where our weaknesses and our strengths are and where to bring down. All right, so we're going to come to a comfortable seat. And once again, we're going to bring the hands around the front of the head. Okay? Just feel nice and gentle there. Okay. Is anybody like a child of the 90s? <laughs> or just like around it? Do you guys remember like Marky Mark? <laughs> yeah. I think it was the same time. He goes, Squeeze the elbows in. Draw the navel up. And you know why he does that? Because <laughs> it makes the muscle rip. <laughs> Maybe it's all those muscles. So squeeze it in. And then relax. Squeeze it in. And then relax. One more time, squeeze it in. And then imagine that I'm going to come behind you and I'm going to tip with you. What do you do? Squeeze it in even more, right? All right, relax. Now this is a little bit more subtle, so maybe not everybody felt it. Did you, where did you guys feel this? Okay. Yep, where did you felt there before? Nice, Ross, did you feel it? Yeah, exactly. Thank you, Kate. Here, these are our plate muscles. These are our serratus anterior. So those are what stabilize us as soon as we go upside down. I should have worn a shirt that shows it. But as soon as we squeeze that in, that engages this here. Serratus anterior, and then those rear heads of the rotator cuff. That, when we go upside down, that's what's going to stabilize the shoulder joint. It's so important. What makes us, the shoulder joint so vulnerable is that it's not even a ball and socket joint. That's the hips. It's a ball and plate joint. It's a ball, like, in a plate going like this. That's very basic. That's not really what it looks like. But <laughs> you get the point. So we need to use the muscles to stabilize it. First through the scapula, and then through the rotator cuff, drawing it in. So come back to your child's pose. Teeny tiny child's pose. And then this time, hands will interlace behind the head. And usually the hands land just above where your ponytail will land if you're a girl, and if you're a guy, I guess like the back of your face will be up. Man bun. Oh my gosh, yes, that's so applicable now. Thank you. <laughs> Hola, everybody. Hola. <laughs> and just like, all right, so now we're going to squeeze those elbows in. We're going to lift the hips. We're going to roll onto the top of the head, just like we did before. And remember the top of your, the part of your head that you want grounded down. And that, those pinky fingers, they almost act as a door stopper for the back of the head. Now squeeze the arms in even more. Pretend I'm going to come and tickle you. And then all of those parts that are connected to the mat, press the mat away. Press it right away. Make your neck longer. Maybe the knees come up off the mat. Maybe one knee comes in towards the chest. Remember, that's our strongest shape, one knee in. And then squeeze it in. Oh, it's a lot, right? All right, come back down. Oh my gosh, we're gonna do some fun, all right. Relax. Now we're gonna come into it with our partner again. And just like before, let me do it with a different body type today. Um, Divin, what about you? Oh, what? Have you done track, uh, church house that before? I tried it once. You tried it once more? Okay, let's do it. All right. Come into your baby, your baby child's pose. Teeny tiny. Interlace the fingers behind the head. So if you guys can't see me and you've never come into Shirt Shop stuff before, come on up. Come on up, guys. Okay, so she's gonna squeeze the elbows in even more. All right, perfect, that's it. And then I want you to push the forearms into the mat. Ooh, this is a challenge in that. You're gonna do it. Yeah, okay. And then once again, we're gonna tuck the toes. Yep, we're gonna lift up. So very important, her position is actually perfect. Her pinky is acting as a door stopper for the back of the head. So if she can tuck that right underneath there, it's going to prevent you from door. Rocking back and, you know, falling over the back of your head. Okay. One knee comes.
they keep hiking in, hiking in. Both knees stay in. Now I know that means she's really strong. Now that she's here, because I know I can challenge her. You guys can get here. I know some of you guys can. No, 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 we're not doing that. Get the heel back inside the chest. You know what she's gonna do? She's gonna do little crunches. Draw the knees in the first one. She's gonna go back up. Oh, right. She's in. She's just like, there you go. Right. In. And up. In. Yeah, there we go. But that's what she, because I know she's strong. I know she's strong. If you have Shrishasana, that's what I want you to work on. Who does not have, who has never done Shrishasana before in your life? Okay, let's do it. Let's do it! Yeah. All right. Teeny tiny toes, folks. Interlace the fingers behind the head. And then as you roll into the top of the head, the pinky becomes the door stop. Tuck the toes, lift the head. And this time, what I'm going to do with her, so if you guys are helping the first time, this is what you're going to do. I want you to lift your right leg. Let's say your right leg. And extend it up high, right there. And then I'm going to take your foot, I'm going to hook it up to my shoulder. Yeah, you feel good there? Mm -hmm. All right, bring, press your foot into my shoulder. Oh, look at that. Am I sure that? <laughs> <laughs> oh, look at that. Now what I'm going to do is I'm just going to go like that. And she's going to be like, oh my god, I trust you already. And then bring this leg up. And I want you to squeeze my hand, roll the thighs and close one another. Look at that. Dorsey flex the feet, all right? Let's see what happens there, all right? All I'm doing is giving her a point of reference. This tells me right here, she has every component she needs for, for headstand. But maybe the fear component is what's gonna. <laughs> <laughs>
to use the wall the way you did your, your partner. So when you bring the head down and you lift up, one foot comes to the wall and I just press the foot into the wall. Do you see the difference? Mm -hmm. oh, yeah. And that's where I start. And then maybe one knee comes in. And that's what we work on. What happens if you keep kicking up against the wall? Everybody guess what? What sometimes happens if you do an inversion at the wall? You don't hit the wall hard. You hit the wall hard. <laughs> that you use too much momentum. Yeah, exactly. Uh, we want to begin to bypass momentum and use the strength. Looking at every single one of you guys, the strength component's there. Like, you guys already both say now. Now it's the figuring it out part, okay? Any other questions?
begin to hit the deeper connective tissue. We do it slowly. Stretching should not hurt. So if it's in a place where it hurts, we need to back off and breathe into it. All right, everybody release. Slowly up thread. And then remove the blocks off to one side. Okay. Who?
my shoulder, press it into my shoulder, press, 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 press. Bring it all the way back down. So that pressing down, what is that strength? When I press my foot down, what strength is that? It's lower, lower obliques and lower transverse abdominals. So if you have trouble pressing down, you need to work your obliques, right? Let's try the other side. Sometimes one side is stronger than the other, right? Always, always. So the other foot comes up, this one, and then I want you to hook my shoulder, and I just want you to press this foot down. Press it down, press it down, press it down, press it down, like that. Look at that there, Brad. Okay, so 
doing it at the wall and drawing it in. Doing your core work every time before your inversion practice. Because then when you go upside down, muscle memory kicks in. And you're no longer thinking about it, it's just happening. Because it's become second nature for the body. Does that make sense? Does anybody else have any other questions? Did anybody want to see what it's like to invert into my Rasana again? Can you do it one more time? Yeah, so they go upside down. And then, so when you come into, let's see. This is like my clever yoga man. I love you. Okay, so when we go upside down, so I'm in my Midway to into my arasana. Okay? So to come into the back bend, I fold at the knees and then I lift the gaze. And now what's happening to my shoulders? You're contracting, right? Pulling your chest forward. If I want to come into the hollow back, which is like this, okay? So and then hollow back would be <laughs> gaze pulling through. And actually, um, we have energy there that we'll have to see each other, but we're going to go into handstand first. And then we'll do it again. Let's see it now. Yeah. <laughs> um, all right, you guys are, there any other questions before we move forward? Okay. Come to all four. Are you coming to all fours? Once again, press the metal.
needed to move those fingers into the mat. The knuckles pull away, but the pads are still connected. That was sweet. And you feel the forearms engage? What else do you feel engaged? Biceps. Biceps, that's right. Chest, exactly. What else? And what's, the, what's my favorite one? What's that blood vessel? Serratus anterior. If you don't feel your serratus anterior, then press on. Right. Such small actions, right? These are what build and pave the way to an advanced practice. So once again, bring your hands down to the mat. Go up to all fours. Push the floor away. Coming to your hasalana. Tuck the toes, lift up, high plank. Walk the feet in, hike the hips. And as you get closer to your hands, I want you to tap the right wrist with the right hand, with the right foot, sorry, tap the left wrist. And then relax the back. Who here is working on handstand? All right, cool. All right, Aaron, I'm going to use you one more time. So just watch me tip to open the mat, I'm going to use you after. Everybody start moving. And I did this with you, Stephen, last time. Just watch Aaron move today. She has the components for handstand, for pressing. What do you need to press up into handstand? What do you think? Shoulder, what else? Shoulder. Shoulder, what else? Hip flexors. Hip flexors, yes, thank you. That's one that you don't usually think of. Open hips are huge. What's the last component? Glutes. And Not glutes. I mean, glutes, I mean, yes, I agree, but what? Curves. Curves, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Forget hamstrings, guys. Yeah. Hamstrings. Oh, yeah. Yeah. No amount of strength can pull you against a tight hamstring. All right, come up to that high plank again, please. And she's going to tiptoe up towards her hand. And her gaze is the same way as her thumb. She's gripping the fingertips. Beautiful. And now she's going to tap this wrist with one foot. You're going to keep it there. And then you're going to tap the other wrist. <laughs> All I did was sh show her where her hips were. Squeeze my hands. And look at that alignment. It's beautiful. Yeah. Or she flex the feet and grow into my hands. There we go. Okay. And now when we invert the back bend, what do we do? We bend into the knees. Oh, let's go the other direction. Bend into the knees still. And then shift them back. <laughs> I love, I love everything you do. Okay, right back here. Like that. 
Um, what do you need for that? Core. Core? But Hamstring. less core. Hamstrings, what else? Um, What's the most important component for that one? Straddle. Straddle? Yep. Adapt adductors. Hip flexors. Hip flexors. That's it. She wins. <laughs> but yeah, it's hip flexors. It's this shape here. So a low squat. A low squat's what's gonna be. It just gives you that state. Did we go? Okay. Assuming you have tight hamstrings, assuming you have tight hips, how are we gonna get upside down?
like, um, not sure where to start when I was like working on Puppy. Like, um, is it a, was it a flexibility or a strength thing or what are some drills for Puppy? Yeah, so for Puppy stretch, if Puppy feels like too much, um, a gateway pose for Puppy would be um, supportive fish pose. So supportive fish pose, so that's a few very, very variation of fish pose. Depending on your flexibility range, block comes underneath the thoracic spine or the rib cage. And then the other block comes between our hands. If you have a strap, strap up the elbows, keep them shoulder width distance, head and neck drop back. And then we try to bring the fingertips down. Okay? After that, it's puppy here. After that, it's puppy with elbows on the box. Any other questions?
the single vibration of Aum. Draw it in a breath. Blurry the whole time. <laughs> <laughs>